Livestock Health 2 or Parasites Introduction to Parasitism in Livestock Parasites cause considerable damage to livestock and loss of income to farmers. In this lesson, we shall explore the effects of parasites on livestock and the most susceptible stage of their life cycle in order to successfully control them. Host-parasite relationship Apart from deriving nourishment and protection from the livestock, other effects of parasites include irritate their hosts, reducing feeding time, affect growth rate, and reduce production of these animals. Parasite derives nourishment and or protection from a host while the host derives nothing in return. Host usually loses blood, becoming anemic, and gets exposed to secondary infections as well as destruction of its organs. External parasites. They refer to parasites found on outside the body of the livestock on or under the skin of the host. Most of the ectoparasites belong to the class Arthropoda with two distinct classes, namely Insecta, for example, Sesseflies, Lice, Cades, and Fleas. Arachida, for example, Ticks and Mites. Various microenvironments, for example, under the tail, belly region, anal region, around the neck, favors the survival for different types of external parasites. This affects the distribution of parasites and livestock production in general. Control of sesseflies. Methods of controlling sesseflies include chemical method, serialization of male flies, use of fly traps, destruction of breeding grounds, and creation of buffers areas. Sesse trapping, here it is in a four-way technique. We are talking of the black material, the blue, the containers, and the white netting. What it means here is the things that are used to attract the sese. The sese can distinguish this color from 50 meters, the ginger blue. So normally even without the attractants, it will come here to investigate this bright color, this ginger blue color. Once it is here, <coughs> assuming it has come because of the color, <coughs> it will investigate and then see the black material here. The sese spends most of its day sleeping <coughs> or rather resting. So when it sees the black netting here, it, it assumes this is shed. So after investigations, it goes in here and the rest here, thinking it is shed. When it's fed up with the resting or it's okay, normally it gets up upwards when it wants to take off. So it doesn't notice this net. It assumes this light. So it goes up. Once it reaches here, it finds the opening is very small attaches itself to the net here and then walks right into the net. When it reaches here again, it tries to fly away. It hits the net and then notices that it has been caught. Normally, it cannot trace the way its way back. So once it is inside here, it is caught, it becomes very aggressive. After a few minutes, it's very tired, it rests here. So. That's when we come and collect it with a net. That is when we need it alive. We only use this type of trap when we need the fly alive. We have several. When we want to suppress them or kill them, we use another one that is called ingo trap. But the cage is covered with a polythene paper. So the fly will die because of heat inside there, but of course lack of possible oxygen after some time. The attractants, normally we use two. We have uh, acetone and octanol. But in the absence of octanol, we use acetone and urine. But in any case, or at any one time, we must have either of the two. 
either acetone and urine or octano and acetone. This one will attract the fly for as far as 100 meters away. So this one is just to enhance attraction because it, if it can see this from 50 meters plus the scent, then chances of getting very many of them coming near are very high. This is the single most important ectoparasite in tropical Africa of all the known external parasites. Ticks have an incomplete life cycle comprising of the following developmental stages. Egg, six-legged larva, eight-legged larva, and eight-legged adult. The most common harmful effects of ticks on livestock include cause injury to the animal, spread very dangerous diseases, and cause irritation. Life cycle of one host tick. These are ticks that require only one host to complete their life cycle. The developmental stages of a one host tick are completed on one animal. The life cycle of one host tick is spent on same host. Eggs on the ground hatch into lava. The larva climbs on the host, suck blood, and become engorged. The larva then mounts into nymph. This feeds and changes into adult. Examples include blue tick, kettle tick, and the Texas fever tick. life cycle of two host tick. These are ticks that require two different hosts to complete their life cycle. The life cycle of two host tick is spent on two hosts. Eggs on the ground hatch into lava. The lava climbs on the host, suck blood and become engorged. The lava then mounts into nymph and climbs on the second host. The nymph feeds and changes into adult. Anaplasmosis is an example of a disease transmitted by two host ticks in cattle. Life cycle of a three host tick. These are ticks that require three different hosts to complete their life cycle.
Chemical control of ticks. This involves application of acaricides to livestock using various methods. For example, dipping, spraying, or manual hand dressing. A good acaricide should have the following characteristics. Have the ability to kill ticks, be harmless to both human and livestock, be chemically stable, and remain effective even when they're fouled by dung, mud, or hair. Cultural methods of tick control Burning infested pastures Plowing infested pastures Rotational grazing Double fencing And Hand picking and killing. Other examples of external parasites and methods of control include shearing to control lice, keds, and fleas, hand spraying with acaricides to control keds, lice, and fleas, house hygiene, maintain livestock shade hygiene to control mites and fleas. Application of petroleum jelly to control lice and fleas, and dusting to control lice, fleas, and keds. Irritation caused by parasites. General methods of controlling external parasites. Lice, fleas, keds, and mites cause considerable losses in livestock. Animal houses should be cleaned and dusted regularly. Irritation leads to scratching and self-inflicted wounds in sheep, lowering the quality of wool. Internal parasites. They are parasites that are found in the body of the livestock, for example, tapeworms, roundworms, and liver flukes. Livestock houses should not only provide protection against elements of environment, but also must allow ease in maintenance of high standards of hygiene. Dirty environments promote infection by internal parasites. Heavy infestation by internal parasites leads to damage of body organs. Proper disposal of human feces and animal droppings plays a vital role in the management of internal parasites. Proper drainage disturbs and breaks the microclimate suitable for the various development stages of various parasites. Roundworms. Roundworms attack common livestock animals, for example, sheep, goats, cattle, pigs, donkeys, and poultry. Heavy infestation by roundworms leads to anorexia, diarrhea, pot belly, egg and adults in feces, general body emaciation, starry coat, and anemia. The eggs of roundworms must be ingested by the host animal 
for its life cycle to be completed. General methods of controlling internal parasites. The following factors should be considered in the control of internal parasites. Nutritional status, size, and the environment of livestock. The stock person should ensure that all predisposing factors to infection are controlled. These include overcrowding of animals in the house is avoided, manure or dung is removed frequently and clean bedding provided, a high plane of nutrition is maintained, and high standards of hygiene are observed. Life cycle of tapeworms. A typical life cycle starts with ingestion of infective eggs found in human feces. Whereas tapeworms have similar life cycles, Tenia solium must be ingested by pigs, while Tenia saginata must be ingested by cattle in order to complete their life cycles. Proglottides or segments can be seen in feces. Animals become ravenous and characteristic odematous swelling appear under the jaw. Liver flukes. These are parasites that are found localized in the liver of animals. There are many species of flukes that attack livestock. Fasciola hepatica for sheep and Fasciola gigantica on cattle are the most common. Liver flukes attack many types of livestock, especially cattle, sheep, and goats. Water snail laminae species is the intermediate host. Control liver fluke basically involves drenching of livestock animals with anti-heliminthic drugs and elimination of the intermediate host by draining swampy areas. 